think it's finally time I get to introduce to the channel my NA Miata. This is my 96 Mazda Miata uh, that I purchased in about 2021. I got it from Copart. When I originally got it, it was Montego Blue and it had a lot of rust uh, that involved a lot of repair uh, along the rear driver's side fender. The engine had uh, a bunch of really worn out seals that uh, was flooding the pistons with oil. So this thing was actually blowing smoke everywhere. I repainted it, obviously. Did the typical Miata starter pack and got the RPF ones uh, with the Toyo proxies for the tires. Um, but it's been a great car. But sadly, along the same lines of uh, Miata starter packs, I had got a long time ago the the Max Speeding Rods coilovers for this Miata. I don't really want to ding Max Speeding Rods generally uh, because I have them on my Jeep and I have had them on other cars before and they're not that bad. But for some reason on the NA Miata, and I've seen other people complain about the same problem, that on the rear, this is as low as you can get it. In which here you can see there's a pretty good gap there. Um, and th this is the lowest point you can do with this coilover versus in the front, um, you can absolutely slam it to the ground and stuff the tire in the wheel well, but the rear, this is as low as you can get. So you'll never get like an even consistency for what you want, unless you want to have right height similar to what I have. So today we're going to be swapping them out for some tying coilovers. <laughs> All right, I was actually able to get this out without having to remove the really long bolt for the upper control arm. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put in the new tying one. All right, it's the next day and I kind of give up on trying to get these coilovers to fit um, without unbolting the upper control arm. And the other ones, you can actually shorten the whole body of the shock up and get just enough room that when you press down, on the assembly, you can kind of make it fit. Um, but sadly with these, the body doesn't really shorten. You're stuck with the full length of the actual coilover. So in this case, I'm probably actually gonna have to undo the upper bolt for my upper control arm and hopefully just kind of rotate it in such a way that at least I can get the lower part of the mount in first and then press down and get this in there. So slight change of plans for at least trying to get the new one in. All right, so I didn't even actually have to remove the entire bolt out. Um, I just kind of left it halfway in. Um, and then I was able to just go ahead and press down on this. And with a little bit of persuasion with the hammer, just tapping the top hat, I was able to get the strut power back in. So now we're just gonna go ahead and kind of put this all back together and keep working our way around. All right, so I finally got the driver's side one fully buttoned in. So now I'm probably just gonna go ahead and just try setting just a, a general coil height here um, on this and then obviously replicate that same depth of like the thread on the bottom here on the other side, just so that way it's the same consistent um, height in the front. And also I have to make sure to torque this down to a hundred foot pounds, just so I make sure that doesn't come loose while driving. And now we're on to the passenger side.
with that, honestly. I'll probably stick with that setup in the front for now. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to the rearmost wheels. Um, for This is the whole reason why I've even been wasting my time doing all this. Um, also, if you're wondering, why is he using used coilovers in replacement for already another cheap-ass set of coilovers? Uh, it's because I found them on Facebook Marketplace for literally 150 bucks, and it's going to fix my problem of not being able to get the rear end any lower. So, yeah. But if anybody wants to sponsor me and give me free coilovers, I'd be happy to take them. And which should say, well, obviously there's plenty of room to bring this down so you don't have that wheel gap. But for some reason, uh, once you get to a certain point with these coilovers, the threads just completely bind and they don't want to go anywhere further down in this body. I'm not sure if like the thread depth is only like this long and it's something internally in here is preventing it from going down any further. But you, no matter how hard you pull with a wrench or you hit it as hard as you can with your purse, this will not go down any further. So you're always just going to have for some reason this thickness of threads here. Or at least that's in my case. So I'm going to go ahead and swap these out for the tying coilovers, in which then this should not even be a problem anymore. All right, I got ahead and buttoned everything up. So now we're going to go ahead and just lower the car down and see where we are with our wheel gap. All right, and that's a lot better than where I was with the max speeding rods. There's still a little bit of a gap here, uh, and that's kind of nearly getting close to bottoming up the coils. There's still a little bit more room to work with, but honestly, it'd probably make it really bouncy um, and a really terrible ride. Just I, I don't really care. For having completely slammed so uh it matches the front pretty well so i'm honestly probably going to run this setup for a while i'm just going to see how i feel about it but yeah next i'm probably just going to go ahead and drive around the block um and kind of get a feel for the new suspension just see if there's any weird squeaks or anything i should be mindful of it is a used suspension setup so i could have totally bought a terrible idea but it does call into question it might be worth buying a lightly used set of coilovers on facebook marketplace or ebay um, versus really cheap no name ebay specials because honestly you can get some lightly used ones on facebook marketplace for significantly cheaper and Honestly, you're going to have a way better ride quality and have a lot more better control. There's even more options out there that I didn't even get ones that have dampeners in them that you can use to adjust. I mean, this is like as basic as you can get. But yeah, I'm super happy with how these turned out. And thanks for watching along. Uh, if you like to see more content like this with my Miata or my other cars that I got going on, feel free to support the channel by liking and subscribing. Um, the support's been incredible. I just surpassed my first goal of over 100 subscribers. So that's really awesome for a young channel like mine. So uh, thanks and having some more stuff coming out soon.